guys? Okay. Welcome once again to the organization and behavior class, unit three. Yeah? Welcome. So again, it's unit three, organization and behavior. Are we all aware of that? Yeah? Yeah. Thank you. Before we go on with today's lesson, as we always do, we'll be going up with a recap uh, activity. Okay? Just like you did, you all came out and made presentations on the uh, motivational theories. Okay? So we have Maslow's hierarchy of needs, aspect motivation theory. I noticed that none of you explained the uh, aspect. So I'll be doing an explanation of aspect motivational theory. We have McGregor's theory X and Y. I also noticed that uh, none of you uh, did an explanation on Vroom. Mm. Yeah. And, we did, and we did that in class. He mentioned but didn't explain Vroom. Also, uh, so those are the two that you didn't explain. Yeah. So these are the different motivational theories. When we say motivational theories, what do we mean? We mean that these are different ways that managers within the organizations can motivate the workers in order to get better performance. Do we, do we understand that? Yeah. So very quickly, I'm going to pick up the two that you've not explained because you've explained a mass news hierarchy of needs where we have physiological needs below. Yeah. And after that, we have what? Uh, safety needs. Yeah. And after that, we have social needs. And after that, we have self-esteem and self-actualization. Let us be clear that Abraham Maslow is trying to tell us that individuals would need to achieve one step before going to the other step. Is that clear? So, for example, uh, individuals need to achieve physiological needs before they go on to safety needs. And it is only when they are secure that they go to social needs and then self-esteem and then self-actualization. That's Abraham Maslow. Let's talk about Esbeck now. Esbeck's motivational theory can be looked at as a two-factor theory. Motivation theory itself and then hygiene factors. According to Esbeck, the motivation factors are the ones that if not present, the workers will not be motivated. And then we have the hygiene factors, which are the ones that, if not present, the workers will not be motivated. But even if these hygiene factors are present, it does not mean that the worker will be motivated. I hope this doesn't sound confusing. Yeah. Esbe, two factor theories, motivation and hygiene. The motivation aspect of Esbe's theory if present are those factors about the job that when present workers will be motivated if not present workers will not be motivated but when it comes to hygiene things like cleanliness tidiness orderliness within the organization okay if not present the workers will not be motivated but if present if the organization is clean if the organization is tidy if everything is placed in the right place does that mean that the worker will be motivated? No. no. Okay, that's I, I, Esbeck. But Esbeck continues to tell us that if organizations want to motivate their employees, they should use a democratic approach of management. As we will be studying later on today, we will be looking at the different uh, styles of leadership, autocratic, democratic, and allies affair. Okay? So Esbeck is saying you want to motivate workers within your organization. Democra the answer is what? Democratic style of management. Is that clear? Then, also Esbeck said some things again. You want to motivate workers, three things. Job enrichment, job enlargement, and job rotation. If workers are doing the same thing every time, they become bored. Okay? So job enrichment, job enlargement, and job rotation. Those three things, again, can motivate workers. Thank you very much. Margaret, what your X and Y we are all aware of? Yeah. 
He said to every ex are the kind of lazy workers. You kick them in the ass, be coercive towards them, make them work. They don't like work. They always grumbling. To motivate them, you have to be coercive towards them. Theory, why workers are those workers that see work as play? They want to work. They always participate. For these kind of workers, you create a better working environment for them. But let us be careful. McGregor, Douglas McGregor, they didn't say that this worker is X and that worker is Y. No. He's suggesting that employees within the organizations fall between the continuum of X and Y. And y. Thank, Thank you. you very much. I'll go to group, uh, Vroom's expectancy theory now. Here, Vroom is saying that about two things. He's talking about two things. Okay? He's proposing two factors here. The first thing is the probability that the employee is able to do the job. Okay? Yeah. You're talking about motivation. Yeah. Employee is thinking, they've given me a task. Am I able, what is the probability that I'm able to complete this task? The second factor from Broom there is that even if I complete the task, what will be the outcome? Will the outcome be desirable? Yeah. Now, looking at that, to answer the question, can I do the job? What is the probability that I will be able to do the job? The answer to that is, do I have enough support from my management and colleagues? Do I have the right materials, the right resources to go on and do the job? In this modern age of technology, do I have the required or relevant technology to carry out the task? And that's what Room's uh, expectancy theory is about. We go to Mark Cogby, which is another theorist, because all these are different school of thoughts and motivation. Mark Cogby has his four R's. Responsibility, reason, reward, and relationships. Four R's. And then we go to Macri and Costa's big five personality. And for Macri and Costa, I've said that as students, we can use what? Acronyms. Okay, so if you look on the flip chart, you can, for Macri and Costa, you can have the acronym. You see that one? Okay. And then this will be for conscientiousness. Conscientiousness. And A will be for agreeableness. Okay. And here will be for neuroticism. O there will be for openness. And then E there will be for extravation. And that is McCray and Costa's big five personality. The last part of the recap activity before we go on with today's lecture. Last week we talked about motivation and performance. And I said this in these modern times, business organizations should not just reward outcomes. Business organizations should reward the efforts of their employees. Did I say that last week? Yeah. Okay, say for example that man working in a telephone sales company. Every day he goes to work, he has to make a thousand telephone calls between nine and five, yeah. trying to convince people to uh, repair their windows or trying to convince people to sign up for insurance. There is high chance that everyone will say no. So are you telling me that this man completed his job by ringing hundred, yeah. sorry, by ringing a thousand customers as he should? Are you now telling me that because they all said no, that he hasn't done his job? No, he has done his job. Yeah. It's the man's job is to ring 1,000 customers every day. Yeah. Do we understand that? So modern, modern business organizations should not just reward outcomes, they should reward what? Efforts. Efforts. So very quickly now we go on to today's lesson, please. Very quickly we go on to today's lesson. I want you to look at your learning outcomes. If you look at your learning outcomes that I've given to you today, please. Yeah. Do we have our learning outcomes with us, yeah? So I need someone to read to me the lesson aimed for the day. The lesson aimed for the day, please. The lesson aimed for the day, understanding ways of using motivational theories 
in organizations. Thank you. Understand ways of using motivational theories in organizations. Can you see that on the slide? Yeah. So today we'll be looking at the, the leadership relationship. We'll be looking at power and leadership influence. We'll be looking at approaches to leadership. Okay, we'll be looking at what approaches to leadership. leadership. Also, we'll be looking at the four main styles of leadership by the manager. We'll be looking at three main forces of leadership. We'll be looking at leadership and organizational what? Culture. And then we'll be looking at leadership and successful change in organizations. This is what we're doing today. So if you still look on your learning outcomes, I've said by the end of this session, all learners in class will be able to discuss the leadership relationship, power and leadership, and the approaches to leadership. leadership. All of us in class today will be able to identify the four main styles of leadership by the manager and the three main forces. We will be able to explain the link between leadership and organizational culture, and then we'll be able to describe leadership and successful change in organizations. Thank you. Some of us will not just be able to explain, identify and discuss these things. Some of us will be able to what? Review, analyze, evaluate and summarize these topics. So we're about to start lecture, but there's something important about this lecture. If you look later on, in your Ed Excel study guide, pages, I want you to write that down, please, yeah? In your Ed Excel study guide, pages 433 to 445, you can read these topics. But that's already in your learning outcome. Yeah, right? yeah. Okay? So if you read those pages, you can read more on these topics. The leadership relationship. So we start lecture now. The leadership relation. Do we have any questions before I go on? Any questions? Can I go on? Yeah. Okay. okay. The leadership relationship. I'm reading for the slide and doing some explanations. Whatever the approach to leadership, the most important point is the nature of leadership relationship. I take that again. Whatever the approach to leadership. The most important point is the nature of leadership relationship and the manner in which the leader influences the behavior and actions of other people. Do we agree that leaders influences the behaviors and actions of other people? In this case, other people would be the followers. Other people would be the subordinates. In the field of business management, other people would be the employees. It's because we can say managers are the leaders within the Organizations, is that right? McGregor, we must be familiar with McGregor. Douglas McGregor, the man with the theory X and Y. He identified four variables that affect leadership relationship. Yeah. McGregor identifies four variables that affect what? Leadership relationship. First of all, he said about the characteristic of that leader. You are a leader. McGregor is saying that there is four things that affect the way you lead, your own characteristic as a leader. The attitude of the people you lead. Okay, so I'll take the first two again. Your characteristics as a leader. The attitude and characteristics of your followers. Thirdly, the nature of the organization in which you work. What is the objective of the organization? What is the purpose of the organization? What is the structure of the organization? What is the culture of the organization? What are your operations within that organization? And the final one is the environment. Okay? The social, economic, and political environment. So let's take this again. According to Douglas McGregor, there are four variables that affect leadership relationship. Okay? He's saying, if Victor here is a leader, Okay, if Victor here is a leader, McGregor is saying there are four things that will affect the way I lead. My character as a leader, my attitude, my beliefs as a leader. Yeah. One. Two, the attitude, the beliefs, the characteristics of my followers. Three, the nature of the organization in which I am working in. Mm -hmm. The culture, the structure, 
the operations within that organization, and four, the social, economic, and political environment. So these four things are the variables that affect leadership relationship. According to who? According to the glass Okay. Do we have any questions at the stage? Can I go on then? Yeah. Am I going too fast? No. no. According to Cousins and Postman, credibility is the foundation of leadership. Do we agree that a leader should be credible? Do we agree that the main problem in the world today, especially in the third world where I come from, in Africa, I can speak of Africa, I come from Nigeria, that our leaders are not credible. And that's why we are third world. Yeah. So a good leader, so if you're talking about characteristics of a good leader, a good leader should be what? Credible. So according to Cousins and Posner, credibility is the foundation of what? Leadership. Leadership. Now this is very interesting, so I want you to concentrate. There's been an extensive research in over 30 countries. In this research, people were asked, what are the qualities that you are looking for in a leader? Look at their answer. People believe, that this is a research over 30 countries. People believe that a leader should be what? Honest. A leader should be what? Forward looking. That is progressive thinking. Proactive. People believe that leaders should be what? Inspiring. Should carry people along. And a leader should be competent. Okay? If you are a leader in a particular field, you should have some expertise in that field. And if you look at all these, if a leader has all these, then we can say that that leader is credible. Do you see that? Yeah. Okay, so if you are going to write about characteristics of a leader, which I might ask you to write about later in class today, I would expect you to tell me that a leader should be honest, should be forward looking, progressive thinking, inspire, be able to carry others along, competent, credible. Good. Actually, emotional intelligence comes in place here. We've done that before. Whereby a leader can motivate him or herself and motivate the followers, can manage his or herself emotion and manage the emotions of others. Do you remember that topic, emotional intelligence? Yeah? Do we have questions before I go on? No. Now I believe that we are going to look about the relationship between power and leadership. leadership. Because there is, there is a link between power and leadership. leadership. Okay? Within the organization, leadership will influence I take that again. Within the organization, leadership influence will be dependent on the type of power that the leaders can exercise over the followers. You see? Yeah. The, the influence of the leader would depend on the kind of power that the leader can exercise on the what? Followers. French and Raven. French and Raven identified five main sources of power which may influence the leader. So I'll just put down there. French and Raven. So if you concentrate on this flip chart here, yeah? French and Raven identify how many guys? How many? Five. Five. Five types of what? Power. Five. That can influence what? The leader. Okay. So the first one will be what? Reward power, is that right? Yeah. yeah. Reward power, is that right? Yes. Yeah. The second one will be what? Coercive power. power. Coercive power. power. The third one will be what? Legitimate, is that right? Legitimate power. And that will be reference, is that right? Yeah, yeah, reference power. Referent power. And then expert power, is that right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, expert power. According to French and Raven, According to what? French and Raymond. You see that? They said these five different types of power influences the leaders. Let's take them one after the other. Okay? okay. Reward power. We are saying that leaders have the power to reward people who work efficiently and effectively within the organizations. The employees who work in line with the goals and objectives of the organizations. Those are effective employees, isn't it? Yeah. People who are very punctual, 
people who meet their targets, people who obey the policies of the organizations, people who, uh, who, who do everything in line with the objectives of the organizations. What we are saying there is that the leader has the ability to reward them. Perhaps promotion, perhaps monetary reward. Okay? So perhaps some kind of inventive incentives. So we are saying leaders have the ability to reward people who are performing well within the organizations. Reward power, according to French and Rainbow. The second one, that's done, so I'll take that. Right? The next one is coercive power. We are saying that, on the other hand, leaders have the power to punish people who do not obey the policies of the organizations, people who come late, people who do not who, 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 who do things against the ethics of the organizations. The leader can punish them. So that's what coercive power is talking about. Do we have questions? Are we clear? Reward power, leaders, managers can reward people who are doing well within the organization. Coercive power, leaders, managers can punish. So let's, I always like to link studies. Yeah. So who will be theory X and who will be theory Y? I'm linking, I'm trying to link. Which is X, which is Y? Here. Go on, guys, tell me. Coercive is X. Coercive is X. Yeah. Because you have to punish them. Punish them. And then this is what? Y. Oh, yeah. Support them, create a better working environment. Yeah. Well yes, yes. Okay, is that clear? clear? Legitimate power. French and Raven is telling us that the reason a manager will come and say, oh, Mr. Michael, I want you to go to that department and do this. Oh, Victor, I want you to uh, next week go and attend the meeting. The reason a manager can do that is because of their position, because of their legitimate what? Position. That's what legitimate power is saying. Em employees believe that the leader have the right to exercise influence because of their roles or what? Position within the organization. Legitimate power is based on what? Authority. Legitimate power is based on what? Authority. Authority used by the manager or supervisor. So legit legitimate power is what? Position power. The only reason why a manager can come and say, can you come with me? If you go to the retail, if you go to the banks, okay? If you go to the hotels, if you go to TFL, the only reason any manager within these organizations can come down from their office and ask a member of staff to come with them or ask a member of staff to attend the meeting is because of their position power. Do we understand that? So that's the that. Reference power. A bit more interesting this one. We are saying that leaders have charisma. Do you agree with me? Charisma. Barack Obama. Charisma. Yeah. David Cameron, charisma. Nelson Mandela, charisma. Gandhi from India, charisma. Do you agree with me? Yeah. Leaders have charisma, and employees know this. Let's see what French and Raven is saying. This is based on the employee's identification with the leader. The leader has influence because of perceived attractiveness, reputation, and what? Charisma. A manager commands their respect or esteem. Do you agree with that? Yeah. So reference power is saying that employees, anybody see the manager say, they admire that manager. He's got high reputation. He's got degree of charisma around him or her. Okay? The last one there is the expert power. We are saying that that person is not just a leader. They didn't get there by magic. It's because they have some expertise or skills. Yeah. Let's look at that. Can you see that? Yeah. Employees believe that the leader is someone who is what? Competent. And has some special knowledge or expertise in a what? Given area. This is based on what? Credibility and clear knowledge of and clear evidence of knowledge and expertise. The expert knowledge of a functional specialist such as the human resource manager, such as the management accountant or systems analyst. These people have got expertise. 
That's why they are leaders. Do you have any questions? Do you now believe, or do we agree with French and Raven, that there is a link between power and leadership? Yeah. Yeah. Do we agree with French and Raven that power influences a leader? So next time when we are within the organizations we work, or next time that we are within the organizations we are familiar with, if you see a leader or a manager rewarding somebody, know that that person is exercising their what? Reward power. If you see a leader or a manager punishing somebody, sacking somebody, yeah. okay, they are exercising their what? Coercive power. Okay. If you see a leader doing something, uh, anything they do, any of the activities, operational activities, is because of their position, their legitimate position. Okay. If you see a leader, the way they go about the activities is because they have reputation, they have charisma, reference, and then they are all skilled. They all are all skilled in what they do, and that's expert what power. They are all skilled. Nobody understands expert power. Do we have any questions? 